There are two main types of experimental errors, okay, for the first of which is called a systematic error. Now, first of all, what is a systematic error? This is when all your readings, okay, are a constant or consistent, okay, a consistent over or underestimate of the true value, okay, estimate of the true value. So, for example, if you were supposed to measure something that was you knew was 9.81, but all your readings are supposedly about 10.81, then you know that there's some sort of systematic error. It is a consistent error, and it's something that becomes rather predictable after a while. So what are the common causes of systematic error? Well, there are some, some of the more common ones usually will be things like your instrumental error. Okay, so this can include things like zero error, okay or just poor calibration in general right it could include perhaps some poor experimental technique which can be corrected okay so this could be like things like parallax error where you're just doing it wrong but the teacher can correct you or it could be some consistent uh, environmental condition okay for example if you want to measure the sound intensity from your radio Okay, you should try to conduct the experiment in a soundproof room so the background sound does not add this unwanted value to your readings all the time. So the important thing to understand, and in addition to systematic error, is that they can always be eliminated because you can usually find the root of the cause of the problem and just try to remove that problem altogether. All right, so that's a systematic error. Graphically, okay usually experiments with systematic errors okay will be you'll find that they do not cut the origin like so right and that will become your systematic error now another type of error which is more troublesome i believe will be the random error and random errors unlike systematic errors what they do is they create something of an unpredictable scatter about your mean value about the mean value okay so what are the what are some of the common causes of random error well these are usually created by human error okay anything that you touch usually contributes to random errors because we as humans don't have the precision to keep repeating things uh, at exactly the same way so for example when you use a stopwatch you may not start or stop the time always uh, at the right moment, right? If you, let's say, you drop a ball and you want to measure it, you may not drop the ball always vertically. You may drop it at an angle. Anything that you touch in general contributes to random error, right? Sometimes the environmental conditions can also create random errors, okay? For example, if you're measuring the mass of an item on an electronic balance, the random movement of the air can cause the balance reading to fluctuate a little bit. So the sad thing about random errors is that they usually cannot be eliminated, right? You can't eliminate the fact that you are human, nor can you eliminate the random movements in the air, okay? But you can reduce random errors, usually by doing a couple of things, right? And that may include, number one, taking the average of readings. So you may want to take multiple readings instead of one and take their average, Right? Or you might also want to take larger measurements, okay, so you can divide the error over a larger value. So this would reduce your percentage error, okay? And, uh, well, generally, also just take note that random errors, how they uh, usually pop up on your graph is that they create scatter. So, for example, you get a bunch of points like this, and that's why you draw a best fit line to average out these random fluctuations.